The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning in visual, audio and multimedia texts. Learners should be able to recognize the use of visual, audio and audiovisual techniques, such as the use of color, dialogue, music, sound, lighting, editing, framing, styles of shot, camera techniques, foregrounding and backgrounding. Hi, I'm Megan. So far in this series of lessons, we've been analysing clips from the short film Come See the Bioscope. Although this film is less than half an hour long, many, many hours worth of film must have been shot to make this movie. In today's lesson, we are going to consider how the filmmaker selected which portions to show and how the various sequences have been edited together to make the action flow in a logical order. These are the editing features we are going to focus on. We are going to look at how the film shows the passing of time, how it conveys a lot of information, and how it uses music. The action that is presented in this film takes place over three days and two nights. We are never actually told this in the film, but we can work it out. Most notably, we can work it out from the way the light changes. But in this film, light does far more than indicate whether it's night or day. Here are some other functions of the lighting. Dim lighting can be used to indicate that the scene is taking place at night or inside. It can create a sense of evil, intrigue or intimacy depending on the situation. Bright lighting can be used to indicate sunshine or daytime and can make shots appear more realistic or exciting. Have a look at these clips taken from the film. They are shown in the order that they appear. As we watch them, pay close attention to how the light shows the passing of day. Let's begin. When Solomon Plyke arrives in the town, the sun is shining, so it is obviously daytime. He meets Musi and the two of them drive around the town looking for a venue to host the bioscope show. Musi then takes Sol Plyke home to his grandmother to spend the night. It is twilight when they arrive. By the time they have eaten and get ready for bed, it is night time. We can tell this because the scene uses very dim light and even candles. Also, Sol shows Musi how to spot the Southern Cross in the night sky. The action that follows is once again brightly lit. This not only shows that it is daytime, but it also conveys a sense of optimism as Musi hands out pamphlets to encourage people to come to the Bioscope show. In the scenes we've just looked at, Light was used to show that time was passing. We also discussed how bright light indicates a sense of optimism, whereas dim lighting can create an ominous mood or an intimate one depending on the situation. Have a look at the next clip and comment on how the lighting has been used and the effects that have been created. By the way, this is exactly the type of question that you should be prepared for for a visual literacy test or exam. In this scene, the action is lit by candlelight. This indicates that the action is happening at night. In this case, the director has chosen to use the dim lighting of candlelight to help to convey a warm, intimate atmosphere. Because the light is quite dim, the characters are shown in soft lighting. This adds to the intimacy of their friendship. By showing the house lit with candles, we are again reminded of the time period and the economic circumstances of the character. This was filmed before access to electric lighting was widespread. So lighting is one technique of showing time passing and conveying atmosphere. 
let's consider some other techniques that were used to show a lot of information in a short space of time. In the first lesson in this series, we discussed the real Solomon Pleike and his many achievements. Obviously, it would be impossible for a filmmaker to cover a lot of the things that he did in detail. In our series of lessons on examining films, we learned that two of the techniques that filmmakers use to convey a lot of information are voiceovers and montages. Do you remember what these terms mean? A voiceover is when someone speaks, but that person is not visible on screen. A montage is a series of clips that are joined together, often accompanied by music or a voiceover. The short film Come See the Biscope uses a very clever combination of these two techniques. When we are shown the actual Biscope show, we hear Sol Plyke talking about his travels and we also see them. So a lot of information is presented, but at the same time, the film is still visually appealing. As we watch this clip, notice how much information is being conveyed. But still, we are waiting for change. Now you may be wondering if the real Solomon Pleike showed a bioscope show similar to the one seen in the film. The real Solomon Pleike definitely travelled from town to town, talking to people and documenting the effects of the Land Act on them. Sometimes he did show a bioscope show, but this is not widely documented. So now you may be wondering how come this is shown in the film if it's not something that he did on a regular basis. I'm sure you've heard the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. By showing us these pictures of London and people like Lloyd George, as viewers we are able to form a better mental picture of what London would have looked like when Sol Pleike visited. By showing the bioscope, we as viewers are receiving a quick history lesson without even realising it. We are also able to see the members of the audience enjoying the film. The contrast between the situation that the audience is in and the pomp and splendour of London and the activities of the politicians is emphasised by the action cutting from the screen to the audience. These are known as action-reaction shots. We're able to watch the bioscope in the same way as the viewers do, but at the same time we're able to see these characters' reactions to what's been shown on the screen. This makes us realise how much they're enjoying the show. At the same time, we're able to see how much they're learning from it. An especially interesting example is the cut to a close-up of the grandmother's face when Pleike's voiceover is talking about Lloyd George being shocked about the Land Act. We already know that the grandmother has been very badly affected by the Land Act, so this editing technique helps us to see her reaction to what a British politician says about it. In this lesson, we are considering the editing techniques that were used in the short film Come See the Bioscope. We've already discussed the lighting and how this helps to show the passing of time. And we've discussed the clever technique of showing a film within a film to convey a lot of information. Now let's turn our attention to the next editing technique, the addition of the soundtrack. The music that is played in a film has a powerful emotional effect on viewers. It helps to establish mood and atmosphere. Most of the music that is played in the short film Come See the Bioscope is not very obtrusive. In other words, it doesn't really stand out. The film opens with this cheerful music playing. It draws the audience's attention and helps to create a mood of optimism. The singing also helps to place the action in South Africa. This music works well for the beginning of this film, as it helps to set the tone for a light, uplifting film with dark undertones. 
Upbeat lively music is also played at this point in the film, where Sol Plyke and Musi are busy setting up the equipment for the bioscope. Once again, it helps to convey a mood of optimism and excitement. Once again, the music helps to set the scene, and it helps convey the idea of excitement as the bioscope is set up. The music that accompanies the bioscope show is also significant. Listen carefully. This is a recording of my voice. It was recorded on the Zonafon label when I was in England in 1923. Here the actor introduces the music as being a recording of my voice that was recorded in England in 1923. Let the show begin. Apart from being a recording of the real Solomon Plyke's voice, this song was a significant choice for a number of other reasons. Firstly, I'm sure you identified it as being Nkosi Sikalela, a part of the new South African anthem. This same song has also long been associated with the ANC, which we know Sol Plyke was a member of. The song is also a prayer for unity and protection. This is also significant as we watch the members of the community sitting together during troubled times. Here the choice of music helps to convey a sense of patriotism it helps us to realize Plyke's love for South Africa and her people. So far, all of the music clips that we've listened to are upbeat and lively and help to convey an atmosphere of optimism. So far though, the action has all been lively and upbeat. Sol Plyke has arrived in town, made a friend and found a venue for his bioscope show. This all changes with the arrival of the police. Listen to how the music changes. By dawn, you'll be out of this town. Luckily, the depressing music doesn't last for long. And in the morning, we once again see Solomon Plyke drive off, accompanied by lively music. This helps us realize that even though the encounter with the police might not have been pleasant, Plyke will continue to travel from town to town. So at the end of the film, we are left with a sense of optimism. But at the same time, we know that Sol Plyke's journey is not going to be an easy one. We set out in this lesson to discuss a range of editing techniques. Let's quickly revise what these were. We wanted to see how a film shows the passing of time, how it conveys a lot of information, and finally how it uses music to carry the story along. I hope that in any film study test or exam, if you're asked a question on how film is able to tell a story, you're able to incorporate some of these things in your answer. In the next two lessons, we are going to be focusing specifically on answering questions in film study tests or exams. So please join me then. Goodbye.